Well, we are here again uh, for another awesome uh, show. We have, for the last two weeks, had uh, Dr. Donovan Christie on from Amwan Regenerative Center in Tucker, Georgia, who has been sharing phenomenal information about what we need to do to live our best lives, have a healthy body, which will ultimately impact uh, our healthy relationships. So week one, we spoke on general health. Uh, week two, we focused in on women's health and its impact on relationships. And tonight, uh, we're gonna be focusing on men's health and its importance on relationships. Let me just start this conversation by saying, it has been known that men uh, struggle going to the doctor. Usually women are the ones who get their annual checkups. They're going anytime they feel a, a pain or a symptom or something represents some form of discomfort. They go, they get checked out, they find out what it is. But men have a tendency to hold on to that pain and hope that it will just go away. Sometimes we fear going to the hospital because we don't want to hear uh, what the symptom may be or what the actual problem may be. And so we suppress it and suppress it for so long and it gets dramatically worse. And then that's why oftentimes men die earlier than women. We break. It's almost like having a car and there's the light on the abdominal that goes off and you just ignore it. And the longer and longer and longer you wait to get it checked on, the worse the situation gets. So a simple $20 repair now turns into thousands of dollars because of a long delay. Now that's been my experience talking to men, but as a professional physician, tell me doc, uh, is there any relevance to what I'm saying or am I off? <laughs> um, uh, Hassani, you, you hit, the, you hit the, uh, the nail exactly on the head. Let me just tell you that. Um, first of all, 20% of men uh, will seek primary care and primary care is preventive care. Correct. 20%. Uh, 20%. Now, if you look at the some of the percentages, we have uh, a third of men, 31% to be exact, will have high blood pressure. 33% will be obese. Mm. So we have an issue because um, when you have obesity, then you're going to get a lot of other things, including hypertension, risk of diabetes, heart disease, and so on. So it is extremely important for men to get in and get checked and get on a good wellness plan. And you know what I'm trying to do with these uh, Facebook Live conversations is to, to let them know, to get everyone started off on a good plan in our upcoming conference on January 5th, um, everyone, I believe everyone who's listening tonight should register and come and hear and get a wellness plan for, for the year so they can get their life together from a wellness standpoint. And they can easily register by going on bit.ly forward slash invigorate 2019. What we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, registration link and put it in the post so that anybody who sees this uh, we'll be able to click it and get immediate access to registration. Now, I've had the benefit and pleasure of knowing you for a couple of years now. So every time I come into your presence, I'm blown away by incredible information. So you've done so much for me in my personal life. I, I think it would be a disservice for any man or woman not to attend a seminar. What can they come to expect in spending the day with you? Like, give us an idea well, of something. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, we're, we're doing this at the Marriott uh, Century Boulevard uh, on January 5th, and we wanted to do it uh, early in the year. And that's the first Saturday in 2019, so that everyone who is making their resolutions, which usually lasts about three weeks, uh, we're hoping that if they're armed with the correct tool on diet, on nutrition, on exercise, oh, and yeah. manage their stress, that they'll be more effective in achieving their health goals this year. Amazing, amazing. So let's just dive into this conversation. Men's health is critically important. When a man in particular, a father, okay, a husband inside of a household, when he is unhealthy, when he is sick, when he's dealing with a chronic disease, what impact does it have on the family? Yeah, you know, it, it's major because um, the, the woman, the wife, you know, really depends upon the, her husband to be healthy. And I think it's a major burden um, to the wife 
uh, when um, her husband gets sick. Say he's stricken with a heart attack or he gets a stroke or uh, God forbid, you know, he comes down with cancer. I mean, he's, he's the one who's out there, you know, fighting the lions, the tigers and the bears. And uh, on a, you know, now most families are both, both um, husband and wife uh, are working. However, you'd still be losing half the income that comes into a household. Um, plus, um, the man is the head of the household, and his influence w- will impact the wife's attitude, uh, the children's attitude, and it's just a—it's an overall crisis when when he gets sick. I think that a lot of men may be ignorant about men's health or male health specifically, not just general health, but health as it relates to a man. So I kind of want to unpack and decode what every man needs to know. Now, oftentimes we hear about women and chemicals and hormones, but do men have hormones? Is there any type of hormonal cycle uh, that they go through comparative to a woman? Yeah, and, you know, and I, I don't want to toot my horn on this, but I will tell you that, <laughs> um, yeah, men do have hormonal changes as well. Uh, let me just tell you this, all hormones, go down with age except two. And those two are cortisol, which is a stress hormone, which goes up in age. um, And that causes weight gain, sugar cravings, right? And it suppresses your immune system. That's why cancer comes up later on in life, 40, 50 on up, typically in men. Insulin also goes up. That's the hormone that balances our blood sugar. But when you have a lot of it by eating sugar and, and sweets and starches, you create a, a situation in your body called insulin resistance, which leads to diabetes. Diabetes, and then you have liver disease and gallbladder disease and a whole host of things that follow that um, just by the aging process. So a man, when he goes through puberty, um, his hormones go up. And the most important hormone in a man is testosterone. So then he starts now, he gets a deep voice um, in teenage. They start growing hair um, everywhere. Um, You know, the mustache, the sideburns, the beards, um, as well as pubic hair. Um, And things get different. Uh, Testosterone is a muscle builder. It's a bone builder. It's, they have testosterone receptors in their brain, so it makes you more aggressive and more daring, um, and that's a part of it. As, soon, as you hit around 30, everything starts to go down. You know, when you have testosterone, ample of it, you're able to maintain your weight easier. You can eat pretty much what you want, but once that hormone starts to go down from 30 on down and it drops, tremendously into your 40s and your 50s, then you start seeing a lot of things that happen with the aging process. Well, okay, so I want to unpack that a little bit. But before we go down the medical route, I have a question. You know, I deal with a lot of couples in counseling. And so whether I'm dealing with husbands who are married or non-married men, one of the general complaints uh, that many women have had about men today is that they're not as assertive, they're not as aggressive, they're not as forward moving, they're not goal oriented, they don't have a passion or a lease for life. It's almost like they've gotten comfortable or even pursue a strong woman who will take the lead in the relationship where a lot of guys just sit back. And I hear the term all the time, well, I'm just, I'm just laid back. I'm just a laid back guy. And it's, so, and it's just like, you can't lead from the back. And so I'm wondering what has happened to the, the concept of manhood in terms of how we operate, not only in relationships, but in life. So would you say that some of these changes are hormonal or is it socialism? Is it how we're socialized and indoctrinated to believe uh, what men need to be in this particular culture? Or is it a biological factor? Yeah, well, you know, you're right. Um, some of it is um, genetic and personality. Um, but there are distinct hormonal changes that occur with age. And some of the things that you mentioned before, like passivity, that is a well-known risk when your testosterone level goes down or your androgen levels go down. That is what makes us men, okay? So when that level drops, 
passivity ensues, depression can ensue, anxiety. You know, men in their 50s, they go to a wedding or they see a sad movies, they'll actually have tears and, and tear up. And they wonder, why am I doing this? You know, it's because these are hormonal changes and it occurs with all men. So don't let anybody fool you. Now, I will tell you, genetics is very important because only about 50 to 70% of men over the age of 50 will have this big drop. You have men, I have some guys that are 70 years old that with a testosterone level of 800. Why? Because they live a different lifestyle. They, they maintain their lean body mass, they eat right, they exercise, and they have more of a positive attitude. So you see that there's differences between guys. I mean, I can tell you, we have guys that are in their 30s, early 30s, that are, they, they have a little extra weight and their testosterone is bottomed out. And you see all the sequela of having a low testosterone on these kids. So I'm not talking about sexuality or sexual preference or sexual attraction, but as a man reduces his level of testosterone, does it make him more feminine? Yes. Or, or more, I don't, I'm, try, I'm trying to say this the appropriate way without people assuming that I'm, you know, referring to something that I'm not. But can you kind of speak to that? Absolutely. Well, um, <clears throat> testosterone um, is the male hormone. Now, women need a little bit of it, but they need about one one hundredth of what we we need. Okay. For instance, when I replace a, a man's um, testosterone, I give him a hundred times as much as I would give a woman. So, um, for instance, a guy would typically get about sixteen hundred milligrams in a in a in a pellet. A woman would get about a hundred milligrams. Uh, if she uses a cream, she'll get one milligram versus a guy who would get a hundred milligrams. So that is what makes us male and um, female is different. Um, testosterone will break down into the female hormone with age because as your body fat increases with age, the fat has hormones and enzymes that changes testosterone into estrogen. So yes, we become more feminizing, we become more passive. You have more testosterone receptors in your brain and in your heart, because your testosterone is also protective for the heart. It strengthens, the heart is a muscle. So it strengthens the heart muscle and it makes, it, it prevents what we call heart failure. Uh, it prevents hardening of the arteries. And so testosterone is really protective. So the question I asked, which I asked with women is, do we get old and then our level gets down or our level drops and then we get old? So we're, as an anti-aging wellness doctor, I believe that we need to maintain our levels to of a 30-year-old or a 35-year-old. Not super normal levels as though you're a bodybuilder and you want to, you know, uh, you know, that's too, that's excessive amount of rage when you have your levels beyond, let's say, 1500. Then you start getting negative effects. But if you maintain your level somewhere between 600, 1200, you're going to have all the benefits of where, where, the way you were when you were 30, 35 years old. I'm, I'm blown away. So there's a fountain of youth. There is, there is. Hormones and chemicals within our body if we take advantage of maintaining our health, having a fit body. So almost in essence, as you gain weight, you become more feminine as a man or- You, you do, have, you do. Because testosterone will make you grow breasts. You know, we call that, we call the, the, the testosterone breaking down into estrogen um, will cause breast development. Men, some men don't, they don't want to take off their shirt because they, they're growing small um, breasts. And, and that's what happens. The prostate, I want to talk about the prostate because as you get older, the prostate will swell and that swelling takes place from the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Estrogen swells the, the prostate. And a man will get benign prostate hypertrophy because of the estrogen effects on his prostate. Testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. Estrogen does because of the swelling 
and the inflammation that it creates in the prostate gland, plus the emotionality. We talked about that before. I'm just blown away. I'm blown away by what I'm hearing. Uh, I wish more men knew this. Listen, if you're a man watching this right now, you need to share this to your page. If you're a woman uh, watching this and you want men to be aware of, of health in a way that they've never been aware, please share this. Share this as many times as possible because this is something that all men need to know. Wow. Let, let's, let's, let's go deeper. So there's this concept called menopause. That right. had. Is there a male version to that? Yeah, exactly. And the, the, the male version to, to menopause is the slow decline of their androgen hormones. That is the male version of it. So when, you, when your testosterone goes down, then there's another even more potent hormone called dihydrotestosterone that goes down. And there's another one called androstenedione that that goes down. And then DHEA you know, these are all hormones that are, has androgenic effects. They all plummet um, as you um, go through your 30s, your 40s, 50s, and definitely um, over the age of 60. So what we, need, what we do, and let me tell you the natural way mm -hmm. to keep your levels up. Say a guy doesn't want to go on testosterone. Well, what he needs to do is to keep his body fat low, right? And the only way to do that is through good nutrition, which we talked about in our first series, right. eating lean protein, eating vegetables and fruits, and getting in the gym to be active. You cannot expect to achieve optimal health if you're sitting around a computer, very much like we're doing now, but doing this for eight to 10 hours per day and expect that you're going to maintain your your um, physique, you're going to get a pot belly, you know, especially when you figure, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm 35, I'm 40 now. I, you know, I'm going to have a, a beer or two here, a glass of wine or two there, a cocktail here or two there. I'm going to eat the hot dog. I'm going to eat the, the, um, the, the processed white flour, the, the pastas and, and you eat and men have a problem with portion control. We tend to, when we sit down, we got to have a hearty meal. Yes. Yeah. A hearty meal means that you're having a heart attack meal. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't need you don't need a hearty meal. You need to eat a portion control meal to keep your metabolism in a high level, so it can continue to burn throughout the day. And I recommend five meals a day. I don't recommend three meals a day. Five smaller meals a day, and that that'll keep your metabolism up. So, so if 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 health of a healthy diet and working out in the gym impacts your testosterone in a good way mm -hmm. and not working out and not eating healthy has an impact on your testosterone and overall general health what impact does your general health have on your sexual health because truth be told men love sex we have a desire for it uh we want it to be phenomenal in our marriage but if we're not healthy are we not able to perform in a successful way with our spouses? That, that is a great question. That is a great question. And you, you would be surprised, you know, because half my patients are women, and I hear this complaint on the regular, okay? Um, the What's woman, the well, the regular basis, huh? What's the complaint? What, 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 well, what the complaint is? is that, well, he's just not interested in having sex. And a lot, of the, a lot of times, it has to do with their physical conditioning. If you have high blood pressure and you're taking a medication, that can drop your libido. If you have diabetes, that's going to mess up your circulation. If you smoke, you essentially, you're saying to, you're telling your wife, you don't really want to have sex. I'm telling you that up front, especially if you have a 10, 15, 20, 25 pack year history, there is no way you're going to get an erection that is firm enough for penetration and for sexual fulfillment. So it's extremely important that your lifestyle, you look at your lifestyle, you know your hormones are gonna go down. So you don't wanna do any, any hormone, hormonal therapy. You have to make sure that you are exercising, that you don't get hypertension, get off drugs because the drugs are not gonna help you. 
You need it when your blood pressure is high and you will always need it if you don't change your lifestyle. I've taken thousands of people, thousands now, off medications because they have followed my plan. And what I'm trying to do for these people in the Invigorate 2019 conference is to let them know that you don't have to be on drugs for the rest of your life. You don't need hypoglycemic agents. You don't need hypertensive. If you decide in your mind that you want to be healthy, you can, but you have to take that first step and you need the knowledge to take that step. So bit.ly or slash invigorate 2019. We're definitely going to post that. Now, now this is a fascinating conversation. So I know men are thinking, okay, well, you know, what can I do? What are some of the basic supplements in addition to fitness and health uh, in terms of what I eat? What are the basic supplements that men should be taking to slow down the aging process and help correct the testosterone and sexual health issue? Sure. So, so now the first thing I'm going to go over again is diet, your nutrition. Okay. Let food be your medicine. You need to do that. If you want to eat cakes and pies on a regular and eat donuts, you are not going to produce good health, period. You got to give that stuff up. And I'm not saying you can't have it every now and then, but if you're going to make that your staple, you will gain weight and you will develop the metabolic syndrome, hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease. Okay. So first diet. Now, water. A lot of people don't drink enough water. You should be drinking half your body weight in ounces in water. So if you're 200 pounds, that means you should be drinking 100 ounces of water every day. Water is absolutely important for your kidneys to flush them, for your bowels to prevent constipation. I can tell you, 50 to 75% of the people we see in our our, uh, practice they're constipated. And it's strictly because they don't have enough fiber and they don't drink enough water. So if they have that amount of water, they're going to help their skin. Their skin is gonna look younger. It's gonna be more moist. And um, everything else works better. Your saliva works better. Your digestion works better. You need water. Supplements wise, I recommend three supplements to everybody, whether they're male, female, child, boy, or girl. One, probiotics. You need good bacteria in your gut to help with your digestion and to regulate your immune system. Otherwise, you will get sick. I can get into that whole topic. It will be a whole lecture. Two, they need omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, You can get that from eating oily fish, or you can take a tablespoon of cod liver oil. You know, that's what, what, that's what our grandmom used to give us. Come around, you'd have to come around and line up and get your, your cod liver oil every day. Omega-3 helps with brain function. It helps with heart function. It helps with joint pains, okay? Very important for us to take our omega-3s every day. Either that or you eat a piece of, piece of salmon or tuna every day, and most people don't want to do that, okay? Number three, they all need vitamin D, vitamin D. It's probably the most important of, out of all the vitamins. Now you can do a multivite, but you're not gonna get enough. That only gives you 400 international units of vitamin D. You need to take at least 5,000 units every day because it helps with your immune system. It helps to prevent blood pressure. It helps to prevent cancer. It helps to prevent osteoporosis. So these are things that everyone should be taking every day. They get those three things, they pop them in their mouth, and it's like a security blanket. It helps your it it helps your overall being. Let's go back to maleness, okay? Not manhood, but maleness in our biology. Now, truth be told, a lot of men, their man, their their maleness or their manhood is identified by their sexuality, right? They're sexually oriented. And so some of the challenges that we face, you kind of talked about it, but I want to zone in on erectile dysfunction and I want to zone in on prostate cancer, okay? Okay. So it seems like these are two of the biggest issues that men deal with in terms of our sexual health. What can be done to prevent it 
And if we are diagnosed with it, what can be done to cure it? Okay, so the number one reason for erectile dysfunction in men is physiological. It's physical obstruction of blood flow. The blood flow has to come from the big a, um, artery called the aorta. It has to go down through the gut to the abdomen in the pelvic area and go into the pudendal artery, which supplies the penis. Okay, so now if you have hardening of the arteries in your neck, in your heart, the coronary arteries, the aorta, <laughs> if you have it anywhere, I could tell you this, you have it in the pudendal artery. When you have it there, you're not going to get the blood flow that you need. So the mind may be willing, the but the body is not. What's the pudendal artery? That's the artery that supplies the blood flow to the penis. Gotcha. Okay, so those arteries, has to be patent, it has to be open. If it closes down with hardening of the arteries, you're going to have erectile dysfunction. Okay, pause. Now, Viagra. Pause, pause, pause. Uh, Every man <laughs> needs to tag another man, share this right now, because we're really dealing with some critical issues that are on the hearts and the minds of men, but they don't know what to do. They don't know the direction to go and they don't know how to solve the problem. Continue, Doc. Yeah, so, so the things that damages the vessel is the same things I talked about before. It's, it's kind of simple. High blood pressure damages the blood vessels. It creates hardening of the arteries. Diabetes damages the vessel. It causes hardening of the arteries. The biggest one that, that you know, we, they throw statins at is high cholesterol. That damages the arteries, okay? So as you get older, all three of these things are contributing to your blood flow. You are as young, as the health of your arteries. So if, you're, if your arteries are old, your pipe are rusted, <laughs> look at it that way, <laughs> have rusted pipes, <laughs> you are not going to be able to have these types of um, sexual fulfillment as you had in the past. So let me just tell you real quick about drugs like Viagra, Cialis, Levitra. All these drugs, they work to open up the blood vessels temporarily. Right, so they work their their PD5 in, uh, inhibitors, and they they open up the blood vessels that and blood rushes in. When it gets so so severe, it doesn't work anymore. So they they don't get the firmness that they need for penetration. Wow, 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 wow. So so in essence, better food, leads better food, to better sex. Better food means better sex. Better Exercise fit. means better circulation because you're wow. getting your heart rate up. It's almost like you're getting a flush through, you know, if you don't exercise and your heart rate's not going up, you're not getting that, you know, clean out. So that, think of it. It's, it's important. If you're not getting that rush of blood flow throughout your, your system, how in the world are you going to be um, virile? How are you going to have the stamina that you need to feed those muscles. But one of the other issues that a lot of men, a lot of us have is this big belly. You know, a lot of men who have a big stomach that almost look pregnant, if you will. And I know that speaks to health as well. Absolutely. Does, that, does that also impact your- when you, have, when you have a waist size of greater than 40, you are at cardiac risk because a waist size over 40 there's no way you're going to be lean when you have a weight size of 40, not unless you're like eight foot tall. Okay. So most men are five, 10, but you know, between, between five, six and six foot two, let's say um, they need to have their waist no more than 36 and ideally between 32 and 36. Then, you know, you don't have that abdominal fat, that abdominal fat, creates disease, it creates the diabetes, it creates heart disease, high cholesterol, it creates hypertension. So getting rid of that is extremely important. But what happens when you get older? Your testosterone drops. So do you feel like doing anything no more? You don't wanna do anything. You don't wanna go out there and run around. You just like, it's, a, it's just catch 22. So you gotta fight it 
by either getting your testosterone up first and then going out and doing the things you need to do or do the things you need to do through sheer willpower and then that will help to reverse the situation that you're in. But a lot of people, it's just easy for them to sit on the couch and watch Monday night football yeah. and Sunday afternoon football. Rather than playing football. I love those things. So I'm not, I'm not, written, I'm not um, saying anything negative about that. But I get you out know, there and I, I work out every five days a week. Wow, Doc. Five I recommend that for everybody. Everybody. And you, the best time to exercise is in the morning when your testosterone is at the peak. Testosterone goes up in the morning. By noon, it's down. And then throughout the day, it's down from 12 noon to up till you go to bed. It, it peaks just like cortisol, the stress hormone peaks. That's the time to get into the gym between the hours of six o'clock and eight o'clock. Wow. You know, a few weeks ago, um, my sinks and my toilet were clogged. And typically, you know, we have our plumber, we have, you know, the people that we bring to the house to kind of fix things. And I guess it was a busy season, couldn't get to them. And I said, wow, well, I guess I'm going to have to do it. So I got my tools. I got my bucket. You know, I got under the sink. I got into the tub and I started to plunge. And, and as I'm cleaning or unclogging the toilet and the sink and the, and, and, and the shower, uh, I was amazed at all of the gunk, all of the hair, all of just the stuff that got kind of wedged in that prevented the water from going down. And as I was doing it, the stench was so horrible it was slimy it, it was just it was a big old just trough of just mess and it was a teachable moment for me because i'm like wow if clocks i'm sorry if these pipes could get clogged with so much waste mm -hmm. what about the, the pipes in my body what am i putting into my body and it just made me think about my physical health in terms of being more careful in terms of what I put in to make sure that I'm living a healthy life. And so it was an aha moment. I'm like, that's, a, that's an, yeah, that's an excellent analogy. And that, and those are some of the benefits of exercise, that force, that plunger that you use to unclog that pipe. That is exactly what happens when you're exercising, you are forcing blood through, and you are making those blood vessels more pliable and more elastic. And when you're not doing that, you are just basically falling prey to aging. And how you need to prevent it. You need to be able to do the things in life that are readily available to you. But, you know, I will tell you, I feel bad for most men because the fact is that they're just, they're in a rut. And they want to go and get up in the morning and go to work and come home and, and you know, provide for their families. But at the same time, they're not looking at themselves and say, hey, I have to take care of me because if I get a heart attack, and I've had men in their 40s and 50s with heart attacks, with strokes, or the, who develop cancer, and it's, it is so bad because now they, have, they become a burden on their family. Yeah. And the spouses. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all preventable. And, and that's what, what, what my mission is. My mission is to let people know that the FDA, the Federal Drug and, uh, Administration, they are not going to protect you. You may think they're going to protect you. Mm -hmm. If they did, then tobacco wouldn't be for sale, right? I mean, tobacco, tobacco has no benefit. None. It has no benefit. Wine has some benefits. <laughs> you know, you have some antioxidants in wines that help the body. But, um, and then the fast food. I mean, the, the, the amount of sugar in sodas and the added sugar in juices and the processing of our foods, this has all been sanctioned. Genetically modified foods, it's all been sanctioned. So you have to be a steward over your body. So you no. have to be educated to do the right thing. One, one of my favorite quotes, and I say this all the time, is that men are often anxious to improve their circumstances, but are unwilling to improve themselves. Therefore, they remain bound. We want to improve our relationships, but are unwilling to improve ourselves. We want to improve our health, but we're unwilling to improve ourselves. We want to improve our careers and our edu education, but unwilling to improve ourselves. And we're the lowest common denominator 
of every relationship, of every situation, of every circumstance that we're in. And at the end of the day, it begins with us. And when we begin to master us, it's easier to master other things outside of ourselves. And our health is one of the biggest challenges and struggles that many of us have. And we really, really need to, to get that in control if we want to live a long life. Not just a long life, but a healthy life. I don't want to live a long, miserable life. No, you don't want to be in a wheelchair. Yeah, you don't want to be in a rehab center having to recover from a stroke. You don't want to be a burden. You want to be able to age gracefully, to be able to be around for your grandkids, and yes, even your great grandkids, to be able to do things with them and not be a burden. And it is possible, but first it takes awareness. They have to recognize they can't just live their lives without the awareness of the pitfalls that are that are out there for all of them to jump in and to create disease. You know, we as physicians, we'll always have business because people don't understand that they, their health is their primary responsibility to the temple of the living God. And if they understood that, they would do a better job at taking care of it. And many of us don't. And it's, well, it's, Dr. Pretty, it's pretty sad, but you know that's what happens. I know that this has just been the tip of the iceberg, that there's so much more that you can unpack, but we just don't have time to do it. And so I wanna encourage every individual under the sound of my voice, if you have a pulse, if you have a heartbeat, if you have a brain, I want you to go and register for this uh, conference because I think it's gonna be instrumental in your personal health, and to start the year off on the right foundation, there could be no better way than to join the conference. So once again, share the information for us in terms of how they can find out about the conference. Sure, it's a full day. Um, it's like going back to school. Um, we're gonna go through nutrition exercise and stress management. We're gonna talk about hormones, from thyroid hormone to cortisol and the sex hormones. And lastly, we're gonna engage in when your joints, you know, a lot of people tell me they can't exercise because they don't have, um, they get pain when they exercise. And that's because the, the cartilage is worn out. And we have some strategies um, that would help to increase the growth, to regrow that cartilage through stem cells and platelet-rich plasma. So we're going to get into all of that. And I think everyone who wants a good plan to understand what is the state of the art um, treatments that are out there, strategies that are beneficial for the body, will register at bit.ly forward slash invigorate 2019. Register, bring your spouse with you. It's something you do together. It's not something you want to do on your own. Bring a friend, bring a relative, bring people who you think needs to have a great start to 2019. You're frozen. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to put on the screen the, um, the code um, to register or the link to register for the conference. So and once again, hmm? okay, yeah, you froze for a minute. Are you good? You're back. Yeah. Uh, don't want this to end. This has been amazing. Hope to have you back on so we can cover some more important topics. But once again, Listen, if you're in the Atlanta area, the greater Atlanta area, Tucker specifically, go to Anwan Regenerative Center. Uh, it is the best place that you can go uh, to find out more about how to live a healthy life and get the proper preventative treatments uh, to ensure that you will. So once again, thanks for being on the show. Any final words before we close out? Yeah, I wanted you to, um, they don't, you know, if they have a weekend, that first weekend free, we have a book of rooms. It's like going to a regular conference. You can stay at the Marriott, fly up that Friday, spend the day with us, taking your notes uh, and getting all the, all the enrichment that you need, and then fly out that Saturday or, or spend another night in Atlanta. We have lots of stuff going on in Atlanta. So, and Atlanta is one of the areas where they have multiple conferences. So come on into town. You don't need to be in town to enjoy this conference. Very, very, very true. Get your tickets, <laughs> uh, get your hotel room booked, and get in this conference. Listen, Doc, love you. Thank you very much. And we will talk soon. I wanted, I wanted to congratulate you, though, on your promotion, um, the, uh, Pastor Asani. I am so proud of you. I, I know you're, you're at a, a, a 
a huge church right now called 12 Stones. And um, you've just been promoted to the campus uh, ministry as the pastor there. So um, I am just so thrilled. Um, and I think as a man of God, you you are, you deserve every, every grace that he's given and congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm humbled by it. And, you know, it means a lot. And so God is doing his thing and is using me. And I you're going to help a lot of people. I receive that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, to find out more information about Couples Academy, simply go to our website, couplesacademy.org, or you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, but we will see you next week with more great information. Good night. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. How was that? Are we off? Yeah, yeah, we're off. It took a second to end. I don't know.